Hello and welcome back to our second Django tutorial on building our CMS, the project that will hopefully make everything a little bit easier for you guys. Um, can't guarantee that, but hopefully it does. Um, anyhow, in today's part, we're going to go ahead and set up a virtual environment, set up a directory to hold all our Django projects. Um, and this is basically just protecting each one of our projects because that's what a virtual environment is meant to do. Um, for example, if you guys don't know what a virtual environment is, basically what it does is it installs another version of Python's binary into a directory for us. That directory um, will be protected once activated. Um, that way, so the original version of Python installed on your computer is not interacting with that Python and future Pythons installed will not interact with it. So basically we're just installing another um, Python into this directory. And that's the whole purpose of that is so when a new version of Python comes out or no, another version of one of the modules or packages that come with Python or whatever it is or whatever is in our project does not interfere with our project until we're ready to upgrade it or whatever. All right. So it's important to use a virtual environment. Now that I just confused the crap out of you guys, let's get started. In all seriousness, I need to get this tie off my head because it's cutting off the circulation to my brain. All right, let's get started. First thing we want to do is get my face off your screen. There we go. All right. All right. So first thing we want to do here is we're going to go ahead and um, set up a directory. Um, and this directory is going to hold all our future Django projects it's important to be organized, uh, especially if you do this, if you end up doing this for a career like I do, uh, when you're writing a lot of projects, I do Django, I do Flask, I do Python, um, I do some Swift work. And when, when you're doing this, these kind of things, things can get messy if you're not organized. So I suggest you guys create a directory called Django, put it on your desktop and put all your, uh, uh, Django projects in there and do the same with each other project that you have if you're doing Flask or if you're doing something else, all right? So it's important to stay organized. So we're going to do that now. Um, I already have a Django directory on this computer. Now this isn't the computer I use for developing. This is the computer I use for teaching you guys. So I already have it on here and I already have stuff in there. So if I do CD Django, change into it and list it out, I have some tutorials in here already. Uh, I'm going to use this to, f to work with you guys in the future, but I'm just not going to create a directory. So well, let's go ahead and create you guys a directory. All right. Um, first things first, go to your desktop. So uh, for me, I got to go back. All right. I'm in my desktop. You go to your desktop. <clears throat> CD desktop usually gets you there like this. CD desk dot. Oh, if you can spell top, I can't. There you go. That's That will get you there. <clears throat> um, so once you're there, let's go ahead and make a directory. The easiest way to make a directory in, on um, a Mac is by going mkdir uh, Django. All right. And that's what we want to do. You hit return and it will make it. Mine's already there. If you're on Windows, can't remember how you make a directory on Windows because I don't use Windows machines. But we do have a tutorial on that. I recently did one on that. Um, if you don't know how to, please check that out. Anyhow, make that directory. Change into that directory. All right. CD into Django. There we go. That's where we need to be right now. Now, the next thing we need to do is um, confirm that we have Python 3.7 installed on your computer. Because I'm sure some of you guys didn't watch the introduction, the previous tutorial on this. Uh, just make sure you have Python 3.7 installed. So Python-V will give you what you have. I got 2.7 at Python, and then I have Python 3-V will give me Python 3.7. This is important right here, Python 3 and Python. This is very important because our next step when we create this virtual environment, if I do not use Python 3, I'm going to get a Python uh, 2 version of the virtual environment, and I do not want that. All right, because we're building this in Python 3. So it's important to know what you're working with. All right. And this is one of my goals in this tutorial series is to make sure everybody got is on the same page so their project works the first time. All right. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is create the virtual environment. So we do Python 3 or whatever one you need to do to get to Python 3.7. All 
right? So mine's Python 3, right? Remember I showed you this, Python 3.7. That's what I need. So Python 3, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and do dash M, all right? Then I'm going to do VNV. This is the module that we're bringing in. And then I'm going to name our virtual environment. Now, I tend to name my virtual environments the names of my projects. So we're building a CMS here. It's going to be our content management system. It's going to be the template or the starting point for all our Django projects going forward. We're going to name it CMS, right? Because I am that creative. So CMS, there we go. Hit return. It might take a moment because it's actually installing a new version of Python on your computer. So if I hit LS, see I got CMS here. Disregard tutorials because that's for another tutorial series. All right, I got CMS here. Cool. Uh, if you're on, a, well, if you didn't get CMS, then something went wrong. And go back and repeat these steps or let us know and we'll help you out. Uh, if you're on Windows, yours is going to look a little different. And you're going to have to do something like C um backslash carrot python dash m vnv and then c colon backslash uh then your path all right it's gonna be something like that to your virtual environment so wherever cms wherever you want cms located in your django directory you got to put that path there um you could try doing it like we did up here with CMS. I don't know if that will work. Like I said, I don't use Windows. All right. <clears throat> so this is where we're going to differ a little bit. I'm going to try my best to work with you guys that use Windows, but we're going to differ a little bit. So you guys got to work with me a little bit by, uh, you know, looking into this information and getting on the same page with me. All right. Um, all right. So what we got right now is we got CMS. So let's CD into CMS. LS. All right. So there's a couple important things in here. We got bin, we got include, and we got lib. If we CD into bin and then list out what's in here, we got uh, pip, we got Python. All right. So the Python binary files are in here. This is where the new version of Python is going to be installed. The include has some stuff. Lib has some stuff. So this is like a whole new Python. Um, package here for us but this is only for our cs our cms project all right so let's see um the last thing we need to do here is activate it and make sure it works once we activate it anything we do inside here is going to be included into this um directory or into this project all right so it's important that we activate it if we don't activate it if i went and said pip 3 install beautiful soup or something like that all right um that's going to be installed on my computer and i might not want that or in my general system all right i might not want that i want it in my uh virtual environment so the way i do that is by activating the virtual environment and to activate the uh virtual environment i do source uh bin slash activate like that all right so source bin activate and then notice the cms over here in parentheses basically this is indicating that i'm in my virtual environment so there we go guys um if you guys got this far awesome because our next step is going to be to install django um so if you got up to here we're moving right along and then we're just going to take it at this pace the slow pace i'm going to try to cover is everything as as much as i can I understand it's slow, it might be boring to some of you guys, but it's imperative to get this up and running correctly the first time, and then we'll have a lot of fun creating some cool apps, okay? Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know, otherwise I'll see you in the next tutorial.